Welcome to Daniel Reviews. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and today we are looking at a new solar controller. Let's get into it. If you watched my previous videos, I've talked about the current uh, solar controller that I use, the EG4 3000 watt model. Uh, it's done a great job for me. It's been very reliable. I use it every single day. However, in my last video, I mentioned that it, it's, it's pretty much at the uh, peak of what I can use it for. Uh, I cannot add, for example, an additional um, switching power supply to, to power one of my Delta Pros. There, it's, it's really, you know, it's tapped out. Uh, and at 3000 watts, we kind of knew that was, that was likely to happen. So I started looking at some additional models that might give me a little bit more, still not taking the big plunge to one of the gigantic models that are out there, but one that might give me just a, just, just a little bit more, right? So I found a 5,000 watt model and I'm gonna put it to the test. After ordering a uh, four 100 watt solar panel array from Calpha Solar, I noticed they have a 5,000 watt inverter. And naturally I'm thinking 5,000 watt might be enough to run two Delta Pros uh, and a power switching supplies to feed them from a single inverter. And so I press the button, and now I've got a 5,000 watt solar inverter from Calpha Solar. Let's go for it. Okay, so with the inverter, they send you several uh, wonderful, uh, pack wonderfully packaged cables. I'm very um, pleased with everything I see here. Let's walk through them quickly. This is, this beefy monstrosity um, is a, <laughs> uh, it's, it's wonderfully uh, insulated. Uh, we'll say that. Um, so you got your, your uh, AC cable right here, right? Um, for out, either outputting or inputting, I guess if it depends on what you're after. Um, AC from the unit. Along with that, and these are, are fantastic, um, you have two uh, MC4 connected uh, uh, solar, jeez, uh, my, my words are failing me, PV cables. Um, so you would actually wire these into the inverter, then you could connect your, your MC4 uh, connectors to your, your solar panel. You have that as well. In addition, you have two sets of, I believe, 25 foot, I'll have to measure these, maybe not quite 25 feet, but um, extension, MC4 extension cables. So if you uh, have a solar array and, and you know need a little bit of extension, obviously, beyond these short ones, this will help you significantly. Okay, now I've said this before, probably in about every single video I do, but it's worth repeating. I am not a professional. I make no bones about that. I don't pretend to know what I'm doing. I am very average and I just try to figure things out. That's the whole point of these videos and the reviews that I do. I'm an average person trying to figure things out. Many of you have seen my dumb mistakes because I didn't know any better, all right? So I'm gonna try to figure out if I, an average person, can, can mount this uh, inverter and hook everything up and get it working. Let's go. Okay, so step one is to get the unit mounted to the wall. I'm going to put it, I still got the EG4 here, obviously, in daily operation. Uh, just continue to plug away like normal. I'm going to mount the other one over here close to it, and um, I'm going to wire everything separately because I don't want to just take out this inverter and put in the new one. Uh, I want to do everything separate and then run them, and that way I can switch back and forth if I need to. Um, I'm hopeful I won't need to, but I want to, I like to preserve my options, so to speak. Let's get to it. So we're going to measure, find the right distance for the screws to mount the inverter. Uh, I did measure earlier and I believe that the distance between, uh, the two mounts are, is, uh, 8.3 inches, give or take. And uh, we'll just do that again and double check and make sure that that's on. Yeah, eight and a quarter, 8.3. It's, 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 it's really close. So 
we're gonna take a couple screws, mount those in, then we should be able to, to uh, hang it from those. Now I will say I'm not super, uh, you know, worried about it being perfectly level because I want to get a, an initial test and then I'll probably, you know, if everything works the way I want it to work, um, then I'll probably rewire everything. Right now I'm just trying to do a quick version and we'll see how it goes from there. All right, but we got it hung, so that's a good start. And now we're going to open up the battery bank that's going to go along with this inverter. We'll do a quick overview. So this is the, the battery itself. Um, obviously the case is that beautiful, uh, I don't know, like gunmetal uh, finish. Powder coated probably, I think. Um, so it looks very nice. You got the good covers on your, your terminals. You got your uh, positive and negative here. And then of course you got your communication ports, um, state of charge indicator. And then, um, of course, you've got a, 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 a 125 amp on-off uh, breaker, which is fantastic. You uh, love having that in, um, in in your battery unit. So now look at these um, these battery cables. Love this design. So this is uh, you know, hopefully this is picking it up. These just pop onto the terminal connections. And it's a very safe, well, in my opinion, very safe uh, way of doing it. it. Pretty much the way the design is there eliminates the chance of arcing um, or causing a big spark as you connect cables to the battery. Um, again, this is a company that really knows what they're doing, has thought this through. Love seeing these cables. Thankfully, everything is pretty well marked here. You've got your battery um port for your your battery cables you got your pv input for your pv cables and then you got your ac in and out and, and so on and so on i'm going to be installing the pv cables here and uh let's get into it all right so one thing i'll call out here is this little cap piece um you would think would have two holes in it so that you can run the um you know the PV cable through it. However, it's completely solid, so you're gonna have to like drill a hole through this or something, or remove it. For now, I'm gonna remove it. The other thing I'm gonna call out is that these um, screws, which tighten in the connectors, is well, they're very very small. So you can see I have a uh, you know kind of an average screwdriver here. It doesn't fit down in there, so I'm gonna have to find a much smaller screwdriver to fit in there. All right, much smaller screwdriver found, and yes, it's going to work. So we'll use this, loosen it up, and then we'll just loosen this until we can stick in the, the PV connector. There it is. Feel like that's all the way in, and then we're going to tighten it back up. And give it a little tug. I think that's pretty good. Well done. Okay. Looks pretty solid. And I think we're good there. All right. PV connectors are done. Okay, we got the first part working. Uh, we got the uh, PV cables connected. And the next step, logical step that I know of, is to get the battery cables connected. Now, this one's a wee bit tricky to film. There are two, um, basically, uh, <laughs> two connectors that I'm going to be um, screwing the, these cables into. I'll, I'll try to get a closer look, one second. There we go, that's inside the inverter. So we're gonna be connecting a positive and a negative to those two uh, connectors. Screw and screw it into the board. Not the easiest thing to do. OK. 
Okay. That looks to be successful, and that's definitely very secure. And that's what it looks like when both are securely tightened. So pretty, pretty straightforward. I just want to show real quick how these um, cables connect because it's just, just so clever. I just love it. Like you uh, just press in and it just clicks in there and then it's great. The, the, to release, you, there's this little white lever you press in on and you can pull it off. Um, a little hard to do one-handed when I'm trying to film it, but it is um, super convenient and very safe and I, I love that feature. Okay, well, we're back at it. It's been a few days. Um, I did get the right cable uh, connector from Calpha Solar to hook up the inverter to the battery, and I think it was definitely the right call, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that connection. And um, unfortunately, it's nighttime, so I'm not going to be able to hook up my solar yet, but I'll go ahead and get everything else wired so that we hopefully are good to go. Uh, again, it's winter right now in Iowa. We've been on the heels of several snowstorms. So I don't know that we're going to have solar or, you know, much sun tomorrow or this weekend, but I'm hopeful that soon I'll be able to, to really put it through the, through its paces. This is the package that you get from Galpha Solar. It obviously comes in a nicely sealed plastic bag. <laughs> it's heavy because um, obviously these are thick gauge copper uh, cables. So that's um, not a surprise there. Let me just pull these out so you can see what's what you're getting and I'll try to have a link if I can to the uh, to the connector if you're wanting to get your own set um, but basically these are going to serve as your connections to the to the b battery and to the um, to the inverter itself so yeah this is exactly what I expected beautiful um, you know obviously uh, screwed connectors that you're going to tie on and then on this side is the proprietary well I call it proprietary but um, you know, that just pop right onto the battery. So I, I'm glad I did go ahead and get these. I think this is going to be much better. I could obviously take the, the connectors off of the uh, battery, but I think the, the safety that this provides is, is worth the uh, go ahead and get in the package. So I, I strongly recommend it as well. I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but if you're wondering which end goes to the inverter, it says it right on the cable. So that is, of course, a nice touch. Um, okay, we've got those cables in there and cinched up tight. So I think we're good with that. Now that I got the cables attached, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on the mount. And we should be good there. And we'll probably tighten that up. But biggest thing is that we now have these cables available which are going to go to the battery all right so the next part that i want to do is i'm going to actually hook up a, an electrical outlet to the inverter from the ac output so that i can you know obviously get ac output with the from the inverter that'll be the next piece okay, at this point we are going to wire up the ac out so i'm just taking my wire here and splitting it apart so that I can strip the ends. There we go. Now we'll just pull out the copper. Great. And then we're going to strip the cable. All right. There we go, and we'll do this one. Okay, then we're basically going to do the same thing where we're going to feed it up through there and connect it. Okay, and there it is installed. I will say I'm not a great fan of these screws they're really really tiny you have to have a small screwdriver to fit in there and it just doesn't it feels like you might strip them really easily so that's not nearly as good as the ones here where you're using the lugs i like that a lot better and um, that's one thing i would like to improve i think we've got it wired up so i've got an outlet over here that comes off of the inverter 
I've got the PV uh, inputs here, not connected to anything, of course. And then I've got the battery cables coming down to the battery. So we are pretty much hooked up as much as we can be. And um, we'll have to test the next steps. <laughs> okay. So at this point, <coughs> I've got it powered up. Um, I got power from the solar panels coming in about uh, 780 watts. Not surprising. It's a cold, snowy Iowa day. There's snow on the panels. Not getting necessarily a lot of production, um, but I am getting production. Um, it's hooked up to the battery. Uh, I have not turned on the AC, or I'm not trying to run anything off the AC yet of the inverter. I'm just going to let it charge today, um, uh, maybe even a few days, get, just kind of make sure everything's working. I do need to go through the manual uh, a couple more times. There's a lot of things that aren't clear to me yet. Um, and just kind of get th that worked out, and then I'll probably do a separate video of actually drawing from the inverter through the AC and powering you know, probably a Delta Pro. Just to show you getting uh, 0.78 kilowatts. Okay, I think this will wrap up our video, uh, or our first video anyway, of the Kalfa Solar uh, 5000 watt inverter. Obviously I need more time to assess it. I got it hooked up. I did um, actually get it connected to the Delta Pro through the switching power supply. It started charging the Delta Pro. All those things worked well, just like it worked with the EG4 uh, controller which is positive, but I just, I just need to see more time. So I, I will definitely be doing a subsequent video, checking in on how things are working. It's really tough right now because well over half my solar panels are just covered in snow and um, I'm not gonna climb up on my roof and try to get the snow off of them. So my solar production is not what it normally is. I just have the solar production from the ground mounts. That's what's coming into it right now. And the ground mounts are only you know, a portion of the power and only good, mostly the way I've got them arranged in the morning. So I've got a limited window of, uh, of testing, so to speak, but I think generally speaking, it's working. Uh, and then, like I said, I'm going to have to do follow-up videos on how it's working and whether I can, I mean, the next step will be seeing if I can add a second switching power supply and start feeding the second Delta Pro through the system. If I can do that, then, I mean, there's there's a lot of opportunity there, right? Like, I'm really expanded out. So, more to come on this, uh, but this is this is all I got for now. Hope you enjoyed it. I think it's a good look, and um, I will see you in the next video.